Coming right up, a special edition of Straight Talk, Port Town. Our guest tonight, co-authors George and Carmela Cunningham, and Doug Drummond, president of the Long Beach Board of Harbor Commissioners, as we continue our 23rd anniversary year. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by the Port of Long Beach, a leader in international trade and environmental stewardship. And the Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. And Scan Health Plan, for your health and independence. Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to this special edition of Straight Talk on Port Town. Our first guests are the co-authors of this wonderful book, George and Carmela Cunningham. Welcome both to our show. Thank you. Glad to be here. George, how did this wonderful book, and let me hold up a copy, how did this wonderful book uh, come into being? Well, we, were, uh, we, we uh, responded to a port's uh, request for proposals uh, to do a history of Long Beach, uh, the Port of Long Beach. It, had, it has been done before, but it's always been a picture book or it's always been a very small uh, chamber of commerce type uh, uh, of approach with, uh, sponsored by local businesses, but never a comprehensive, uh, in, in-depth history of the port. And uh, the president of the Harbor Commission, Doug Drummond, who was a, um, has been a champion of this project all along, um, it was his really concept to do a history uh, and, and something that everybody could look at and would, would tell how we got to where we are and, and what the uh, port means to Long Beach and what it's done for the city and what the city's done for the port. And um, that's how we started. And Carmela, uh, I love the title, Port Town. I mean, uh, we certainly don't think of Long Beach as a town these days. It's a major city, seventh largest city in the state. And, uh, uh, but, but at the beginnings, and let's mention June 24th, 1911 is when it all started. Uh, Long Beach was a very different place then. Tell us about the evolution. Well, it was a different place. Um, a, a couple things, though. I, I respectfully disagree. We are a big city, but Long Beach is a town, and to me, town is the heart and the soul. And if you walk around, you can go places all over the city, see people you know, see the leadership of the city. Um, uh, let let, me, let so me say, I agree with town, that totally. We're a town. And, and, and many people have called, and I certainly agree with it, Long Beach is the biggest small town in America. I love so it. So I'm on and, the same and wavelength, it. and it resonated with me. In, in a way, that's um, one of the many reasons it was so much fun to write this book, and, and in so many ways, a labor of love, because uh, so many people come to Long Beach and put down roots, or they have roots, and that's how I felt being here. I've lived here in, in the city of Long Beach for probably much more than half of my life, and so there are the landmarks that go every, everywhere from uh, the cranes when you're driving down Third Street that you see that wonderful picture of the crane. When we were kids, my dad used to pile us into the car and drive down to the port to see Herman the German. Um, just <laughs> Which is a giant crane. Which is the biggest, you know, the biggest crane in the world, which we took off the Germans in World War II. <laughs> So, and we heard that every Friday night. We went to the Pike. We did all these things. So um, you'll look it's at part Port of the Town. fiber. It's it's the fiber, the heart, the soul of this city, this town, and the in the book. We tried to capture that. So George, so the book, uh, interestingly enough, starts way before the port ever was uh, ever came here. It starts way before. Yes. And you title Part One: Historical Heritage and. Tell us a little bit about why you did that and what that heritage involved. Well, when we started out, we wanted to write about two things. We wanted to have two things we were looking at. One was the, the port, a piece of real estate that's been here before people were here. And the second thing uh, was the stewards of that real estate as it, it goes through. Long uh, before it was a port. Long before it was a port. And, and, and also the political institution, the public agency that is a port. It is a part of our lives. It's an institution. And that started in, uh, in, in 1911. And I, I mentioned just a few of those early chapters, the Spanish colonizers, the revolution, uh, railroads, 
birth of a city, the free harbor. I mean, fascinating before, quote, June 24th, 1911 came around. That's right. And it all set the stage for what happened then. It all set the stage. The railroads brought rail connections here. Rail connections are one of the, one of the, uh, one of the reasons that the ports are so successful. You had this huge population here. That's another reason the ports are so successful. And the port made good decisions. The ports made good decisions. Uh, Long Beach has always uh, done its own, it followed its own path. Uh, despite uh, lots of pressure, it started in, before 1911 and right up to the day for the two ports to join together, Long Beach has always said no. We are, we are our own port and, we're, and it is a port town as Carmela And Carmela, uh, George mentions LA, and even though the two ports, Long Beach and LA, are adjacent to one another, they are separate. And it seems to me and many that uh, that the port in LA is more of a, a kind of an appendage as part of the the city. But but in Long Beach, the port is part of the heart and soul of Long Beach. Of Long Beach, we we looked at that, and that is what the um, the title of the book so captures this idea of port town. We actually had a different working title for the book for many months, and that was um, Up From the Mud. And that, I'm glad you didn't pick that. <laughs> <laughs> you're, I think you're not alone. But we had this idea that, that this entire port sprung up from the mud. Wow. And, and we liked that idea of it growing up and, and becoming what it became. And so we went with that for a long time, and, and uh, Commissioner Drummond said, Really, Carmela? <laughs> and <laughs> so we, start, we started thinking about it a little bit more. And, and we brainstorm. And, and when you're together 24 hours a day and your desks are right next to each other, which is how George and I have worked for many years, both on the Cunningham Report and on this, um, you kick around ideas throughout the whole 24-hour day. And so at one point, we started kicking around ideas. And we finally came up with this idea of Port Town. And for me, it so fit all throughout the book once we hit it. Yes, LA has a port. It's a city that has a port down at the end of it. And some people have never even been there. In Long Beach, we're a port town. It's our port. It's yeah. our town. And, and people go there. And, and the port reaches out to the schools. And you have you know, green port events and, and so many things. The municipal band concerts are still supported by the, the port. There are so many things that, that make this our port town. And I think the port in Long Beach has uh, a dramatic influence on the entire community, separate and apart from what goes on down where the ships are. Uh, and we'll be uh, speaking in the next segment with the president of the Long Beach Board of Harbor Commissioners, Doug Drummond, who was really, as you mentioned, George, the initiating force for this book. Stay with us. At the Port of Long Beach, we're not only delivering jobs, smart ideas, and forward-thinking environmental initiatives. We're also delivering opportunity for all of Southern California. Oh, and a clearer horizon line. To learn more, go to polb.com, the port of Long Beach, thinking outside the docks.
At Performance Plus Tire, you'll find we carry Toyo tires. For over 50 years, Toyo has been a world leader in the development of high-quality tires. Optimum performance, safety, and a comfortable ride. That's what makes Toyo tires great. And now come into Performance Plus Tire for a great deal on these Toyo tires. Proxies ST, Open Country AT, and Proxies 4. Toyo tires, driven to perform. Come in today and we'll install new Toyo tires on your vehicle while you wait. Performance Plus Tire on Cherry Avenue, one mile north of the 405 in Long Beach. Welcome back. We're joined now by Doug Drummond, the president of the Board of Harbor Commissioners. Welcome back to our show, Doug. Thank you, Art. You were a moving force, as George mentioned, for this book. Uh, what triggered the idea? History is my passion. And I, I came on the board just immediately after the centennial celebration in 2011. 2011. Yeah. Yes. And, and I, I saw the, the book that they put out at at that time, and to me, it was it was nicely done, but it was another coffee table book. It sure. was not a history. Yeah. And I really wanted to see a history written of the port. My, my dad used to say that people criticize government continually, saying that government can't get it right. And, well, this was a case where government really, really got it right. So you're pleased with this this product? Uh, it's marvelous. It's come Great out. job. George and Carmela really, really deserve all kinds of of accolades. And you, as a commissioner, I know do travel, and uh, copies of this book will get into the hands of our foreign trading partners, I'm sure. Absolutely. And not to mention Congress. That's right. Yeah. And uh, this, this encapsulates a sense of history of our town and of the port. And it's, uh, I haven't had a chance to read it yet, to be honest. I just got it two days ago. but. It's a it's a fascinating, and I look forward to reading it. Uh, what would you want people to know uh, in uh, uh, in town who have not had a chance to read the book, but uh, but should be reading the book? Well, you know, as we as we talked about a little bit earlier, um, uh, this is we came we came as a, as the book evolves. We come in and look at the at the history of this port and of this town. And they are intertwined. Yeah. They're not just one. They are intertwined. This is, in fact, a port town. While we came up with, and the subhead of this book is how the people of Long Beach built the port, uh, defended the port, and profited from the port. And I, I, I would like the people of Long Beach to read this to feel that connection. There is a connection between the town and the port, and that, and that they, and and there are some negative effects to it. There, there's yeah. I, nobody is denying the negative impacts. The port can have. But this city is a very different city, obviously, than if our founders back in 2011 had not decided to create a port. It's a very different city. And even at the time the port was, uh, was uh, began, there was controversy. Some people said, we don't want a port. Los Angeles has a port. We want to be this, this tourist city, this beach yeah. town. And, sure. uh, and, you know, people have competing visions. That's what politics is all about. Uh, coming out with a, a common solution. And, and Doug, uh, the, as you know from being on the commission and being its president, the, the port has a fantastic impact today, much greater than it probably had any time in its history. Absolutely. Our port has grown so much, and particularly the last 10 years, cleaning the air, cleaning the water, it's a, it's a marvelous change. And that's a change that has swept throughout Southern California. I was in downtown Long Beach a, a week ago Monday, and or downtown Los Angeles a week ago Monday at, at a breakfast meeting, and I had never in my life seen downtown Los Angeles so beautiful, and that's because of the work this port has done, and this port is moving forward not just as a great job maker, but in showing the world that the air and the water can be clean. Yeah, the, this whole green port uh, philosophy that uh, the port adopted some 10 or more years ago and now has implemented uh, tries to give you the best of both worlds, economic growth and cleaner air. And the truth is that had to start here. This is, this is the major port. This is the, the port where it all happens. This is the port, uh, and, and also with Los Angeles, once they got together and the ports do cooperate on they compete, projects. but they also cooperate. That's right. That's absolutely right. Vigorously compete. Vigorously compete, and sometimes uh, disagree vigorously. Uh, but uh, on this, they, they were very successful. And it happened here, 
and it's, it's spreading out to other ports as well. And our port is known throughout the world as the cutting edge for, for green ports. That is correct. And, it didn't, and as you see again and again in the book, those things don't just happen. People make them happen. And you uh, chose a very enlightened uh, CEO, uh, John Slanger, up as your, who is a, a master of, of goods movement and uh, That's right. point of origin to point of uh, sale, and is uh, helping change the industry. Absolutely, we we are traditionally we're an industry of silos. The shipping company is in one silo. The the Customers on another one, the truckers are another one, the railroads are another one. And that doesn't lead one. to efficiency. It does the not lead to efficiency. And, and John Slanger, up having come from, from uh, the, the FedEx. FedEx world, 10 minutes is a big deal. It's a big deal. <laughs> now, we're, we're going we're gonna to make history in the movement of goods. George, you've been following ports. You had the Cunningham Report with Carmella for many years. You yes. worked on the Press-Telegram uh, uh, what's your sense of, of where the port is today? Well, it's, it's in a challenging position. Things are changing. The world is changing. It's always been in that position. And if you look at the port as it was 50 years ago, or 70 years ago, or 80 years ago, um, it is a different port than it is today. And if you're going to look in the, in the future, it's going to be a different port than it is today. And these changes are taking place all around us. And it's going to have impact on everything. Uh, and you, you see our recent uh, thing with the uh, union, the International Longshore and Warehouse Union. And, you know, they're looking at things and they're trying to figure out where they're going to fit into this yeah. new, uh, into this new uh, paradigm. Well, we have the giant ships coming and, of course, the, the bridge which is being built will be iconic. It will be the tallest structure in downtown Long Beach and will tower over the harbor. And we'll be, and it's going to be lit at night with a bike path. We'll really be That's right. an iconic vision for downtown Long Beach to share with the Queen Mary. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Doug, thank you for uh, for uh, your inspirational thought to make this book into being, and thank you again for joining us. The thought didn't make the book. George and Carmela made the book. Well said. Thank you. I'm proud of them. Thank you, sir. And we'll be back with more of our show after these messages. <laughs> How do you like your chances the rest of the way? I got no idea. But I do know that if we stay with Naples Rib Company, at least we won't go hungry. Coach, what do you think about some of those questionable calls tonight? Oh, yeah, but if you want a sound call, I'd call Naples Rib Company. You can't miss on that call. Then Naples Rib Company is part of your game plan? There really is nothing more motivating than a great barbecue meal at Naples Rib Company. Victory or not, Naples Rib Company, great game plan. Founded in 1976, Polly's Gourmet Coffee is Southern California's most complete gourmet coffee store. Polly's has the best tasting coffee freshly roasted every day right in the store. Plus a wide selection of teas, an in-house bakery, espresso bar, patio dining, and more. We also offer Wi-Fi, free internet access for all of our customers. Our nationwide clientele agree, when it comes to coffee, there's only one name to remember. Polly's, 4606 East 2nd Street, welcoming you into Belmont Shore. When I was a boy growing up in Italy, I had a dream to own my own store. I came to the United States and I worked hard as a tailor. Hi, I'm Umberto. I've been in Long Beach since 1960, carrying the finest quality men's clothing. It was a long way away, but styles are just around the corner. Umberto, 2141 Belfar, Long Beach. When you have enough internet speed for everyone in your home, mom can video chat with grandma. Your daughter can check her favorite sites. Your son can conquer the galaxy. And you still have enough bandwidth to conquer your first warrior pose. Get internet speed starting at 60 megabits per second with Charter Spectrum. Where will it take you? We're back, rejoined by Carmela Cunningham, and uh, uh, let me just reference the uh, current issue of the Straight Talk magazine with a, a lovely picture of George and Carmela on the cover, standing 
by the beach, enjoying life, as you seem to do all the time. And uh, we also, if I can put in a plug, have fun in the sun. Uh, hundreds of things you can do, 100 days of summer here in Long Beach. Uh, quite the town. You grew up here, so there are a lot of things to, to do without leaving town and without spending a lot of money. Yeah, definitely. So uh, what's it like being husband and wife and writing a book together? How do you do that? Well, it's intense. <laughs> uh, Carmela's a very strong-willed woman. I'm a kind of a stubborn, typical male. And so, you know, there, there are times when we, we, uh, we don't always agree, but we're not going to get divorced over a book or uh, <laughs> we're not going to. So we have to settle our differences, and, and we do. And, um, and we both respect each other's uh, talents. Um, I uh, came from the world of journalism. Yeah. Uh, with a strong interest in history, and Carmela has, uh, was a history major, and she's also worked as a journalist before we... Uh, Great, so you there's a lot of commonality. There's a lot of commonality how, there. How long did it take you guys to write this 500-page tome? The, I believe the writing took approximately 18 months. Um, we started with the proposal and an abstract prior to that. Uh, but it took about 18 months, and it took about, oh, only seven days a week was our limit on working. <laughs> and uh, we were only going to do it 20 hours a day. But we worked, we worked all day, every day. We, we, and do you each read each other's chapters and it's, kind it's of a little, it? It's a little more um, interwoven than that. Uh, I was saying earlier that George is starting to read the book, and someone was laughing, saying for the 90th time, and it's, no, pretty much for the first time. So we uh, had to figure out how we were going to work, and in the very early stages, we said, I'll write a chapter, you write a chapter. So that happened, and I think we, after more than 20 years of working together, we're pretty good at mimicking each other's voice, so it seems right. all the time like one person wrote it. But we then moved to a point where uh, George took the lead and put down what he wanted and where he was going and of course this came from many hours worth of research and outlining and talking and discussing what would go where and then I took it from there and and recaptured or rewrote as was so necessary. So it's fully both of you are oh, really absolutely. integrated, yeah. really integrated. Jude, what, let me ask you, what have you learned from writing the book about the port that you didn't know? I, I changed a lot of the ways I thought about the port. And one of the ways, and it's a theme that runs through the entire book, truthfully all the way from the Indians, is this idea of ownership of property and who owns the port. And, you know, there's lots of people who tell you... That's a big question it's still. A huge <laughs> question. It's a huge question still. Get the lawyers involved. <laughs> That's right. And, and I think if you got uh, two or three different lawyers, they would have two or three different opinions. It's not a simple matter. Who owns, owns the, the port? port? Fascinating. And, and who controls it? And that's been a battle. And we talk about... The, the city has defended its port. The people of Long Beach, that's one of the battles they've, they've done, is to say to Los Angeles, who wanted to annex this whole city, no, we're our own city. We're not yeah, part of Los and Angeles. And defend the oil revenues that are defend generated the by revenues. the wells that are underground in the port property. And there was battles that were won and battles that were lost. But the people of Long Beach and the, and, and the leaders of Long Beach were always willing to make that fight. Yes. And so... And it was a fight, a fight worth fighting for. It was a fight worth fighting for. And because of that, uh, if you have a problem with this, if you live in Long Beach and you have a problem with something at the port, you can go down to your city hall where if you go upstairs, you can look out the window and see the port. It's not like Los Angeles. You can go down and see that port. And when there's, and when there's uh, assets and profits to be divided among the community, from the convention center to the, to the World Trade Center, to the aquarium, things where the, the port is involved in the city, and to the money that's transferred every year yes. from the port to the city, those things go to Long Beach. They don't go to San Fernando Valley. They go Point to Long well Beach. Taken. And Carmela, kind of same question to you. What did you learn writing the book that you may not have fully understood before? I, I think it goes um, kind of a corollary to what George was saying. You get this idea of this was a piece of land that had value from day one, and early Indian tribes knew it, and um, earlier, early 
Spanish uh, explorers knew it, and every single group of people who came knew this was a valuable place. And to me, it's kind of interesting because you talk about who owns the port, and the answer really is whoever is holding on to it. <laughs> and, and that's why you get to the protect and defend it. You can profit from it. You can, you can be great stewards of the land. Possession is nine-tenths of ownership. Exactly. <laughs> and, and that's the point. And, and I think it will always be like that. But no piece of land becomes the property of one person or group of people in the states you that know, way. George, I think of our, we have two wonderful ranchos in town, as That's you know, right. that gives a sense of our history and Spanish heritage and all that. But I never thought of the, the port in that framework, but uh, it's the same time that these other folks were there. The first third of your book is, uh, is on history. Well, that's right. And, and, of course, the two ranchos were controlled by the Bixby's, who, who have been a huge part of this town's history. Absolutely. And a huge part of everything that happened here. Well said, and we'll be back with the rest of our show after these messages. Bill Trainees mixes California style with continental cuisine that includes fresh seafood from around the world. Since Phil is the chef, the menu has a wide variety of pastas, salads, soups, and appetizers that feature his unique personal touch. And the Italian-American signature dishes are simply beyond delicious. You never know who you're going to run into at Trainees, from the famous sports legends on the Wall of Fame to local celebrities having a drink at the bar. For the best fine dining experience, visit Phil Trainees. At Performance Plus Tire, you'll find we carry Toyo tires. For over 50 years, Toyo has been a world leader in the development of high-quality tires. Optimum performance, safety, and a comfortable ride. That's what makes Toyo tires great. And now come into Performance Plus Tire for a great deal on these Toyo tires. Proxies ST, Open Country AT, and Proxies 4. Toyo tires, driven to perform. Come in today and we'll install new Toyo tires on your vehicle while you wait. Performance Plus Tire on Cherry Avenue, one mile north of the 405 in Long Beach. There's a world of opportunity available through the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. Would you like to move ahead in the field of human resources and personnel management? Sign up for the Human Resources Management Certificate Program. You'll learn how to expand your knowledge and skills and advance in this dynamic industry. For more information, contact the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. You've been planning this moment for a long time. It couldn't be a more perfect moment. And you have the perfect ring that will tell her, I want to love you forever. But nothing is perfect. Don't listen to that guy. He got the ring at McCarty's. McCarty's yes. makes a moment. We're back. What a marvelous conversation with the authors of this wonderful book. George, uh, thank you for, for sharing your, your passion and your expertise and uh, uh, just a final comment you might want to make about everything. Well, we've just been so excited because the book is out, as you can see. And it is, is it like giving birth? Is, <laughs> it is. It is. And, and you know, uh, you hold it in your hand and pick it up and, you know, I am reading it again. And, you know, we, we finished writing this six months ago. Wow. And so now when we pick it up, it's almost like it's almost like new. And I'm reading the other day. I'm going like, hey, this is good. So it's really exciting. Well, you know, I think writing a book makes you immortal because uh, whatever happens, that book is there. Well, I was looking for something to make me immortal. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but, but um, you know, it, it was a lot of work and it was a huge amount of fun. And it's gratifying to have it in our hands. Uh, we did the day we were finished, packed up our home. Um, sold our home, got rid of our things, and have been on the road. Really? Since. Yeah. Oh. We just came back in to, to Long Beach well, for we're so glad like you this. did. We're so glad but, you wrote the book, and it's great that the port is such a vigorous sponsor of what you've done. Congratulations. That. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you all for joining us for this great show. See you next week for the next edition of Straight Talk. Good night, everyone. Straight Talk has been brought to you by the Port of Long Beach, the Press-Telegram, and Scan Health Plan. And remember, Straight Talk is viewable 24-7 at straighttalktv.com.